Hello Excelers and welcome. Thanks for joining me today for another how to excel at excel.com Excel tip video. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button below to get notified when there's a new Excel tip available here on my YouTube channel. And if you want to sign up for the how to excel at excel newsletter, which gives you three free Excel tips every month direct to your inbox. There's a link below in the description box there. And, and when you sign up, you'll get my free ebook, which has got my top 30 Excel tips. Okay, let's get started on today's Excel tip. So today, Excelers, I'm gonna show you how to create a timestamp in Excel. And we're gonna do this with a formula. So what we'll end up with by the end of this video is, we make a data entry into one cell. And once we hit enter, it puts a timestamp in another cell on the spreadsheet. And this is one of the most popular blog posts on my blog, how to excel at excel.com. And I get most asked the most questions about it. People really seem to want to use a timestamp in their Excel spreadsheets. There's a few ways to do it. And another one is with some Excel Visual Basic. But today I'm going to show you how to accomplish this with a formula. So this is the formula we're going to use and build. Uh, to create our timestamp and you might be asking well why don't we just use um, some of the built-in functions that Excel has so you could have the today function which would give us today's date or we could have the now function which does the same thing and depending on how you format these we could uh, give date and time so it's currently formatted as short date but if we go and give it a custom format. We could give it date and time. So if you're looking at this video, you probably realize that these two functions don't do the job for you. They're known as volatile functions in Excel. And that is that they recalculate every time there's a change made to the Excel spreadsheet. So this would date and time stamp for the current date and time but once you update the spreadsheet, these update as well. That's not what you're looking for. There's also a couple of shortcuts you could put in. You could do control and semicolon to put the date in. You could also hit control shift and the semicolon key to put the time in. But, so these could work possibly, but it's very manual. And also if somebody is data en putting data entry in here, it's not going to automatically add a timestamp for you, you'd have to manually have to put in the Excel sh keyboard shortcuts. So before we get started, there's a couple of things we need to go through. One of them is understanding circular references because there is a circular reference in this formula. And the second thing is how we control how Excel calculates those circular references. And that's in something called iteration settings. So let's look at circular references. So circular reference in Excel is where you directly refer to the cell that you're writing the formula in. So for example, so if we type, for example, one in C11 and two in D11, and then we write a formula like this, we will add C11 plus D11 plus E. 11. So you can see that E11 is directly referring to itself. And if I hit enter, L warns us that there's a circular reference and will advise us to try to remove or change the references or move the formula to a different cell. Circular references in Excel are usually something that we avoid. Excel won't by default calculate them because if it did try to calculate them, it would just run and run in a loop and eventually stall. So it actually prevents them from running. But we want to use a circular reference in our formula. So what we can do is we can trick Excel into running that formula just the once. And that's what's known as iteration. And it's really easy to change those settings. You go into File, Options. This is Excel 2016. Into the Formula Options. And uh, we can click Enable Iterative Calculations. And let's set that to run once. So Excel won't go into a loop when it comes across a circular reference. If we hit OK, we can see that Excel has calculated that 
without a problem because we've changed those iteration settings. So we know how to use and understand circular references. We know about iteration and we've changed our settings. We're ready to build the formula. So let's just get rid of these. OK, let's write our formula. It's an if formula. It's an if formula and start with equals if. And our logical test is if a2 is in blank, then we want Excel to run this second if statement, which is the one that contains the circular reference. So it is if b2 is blank, we want Excel to enter the now value which is our timestamp. And if it's not blank, and if it's not blank, we just want it to give us the value that's in B2. Let's close that if statement, and then we'll finish off the second argument of our first statement. And let's drag that formula down. So it looks like there's nothing in there at the moment because A2 is blank. So let's test it. There we go. Let's test it again. So we've successfully created a timestamp for column B when we enter something into column A. Now, if you overtype this, it doesn't change. If you want that to change, you actually have to delete that and reset it and then re-enter any data. Okay, that's how to create a timestamp in Excel with a formula. What we've gone through is understood circular references, understood how Excel calculates those circular references and how to manipulate that with the iteration settings in Excel. If you want the example workbook that comes with this video, click on the link below. Don't forget to thumbs up, comment or subscribe to be notified of further Excel videos and I'll see you soon for another how to excel at excel.com video. Thanks for watching.